Alright, uh, so we're at the bait shop. The Bel Air Bait and Tackle. This is about one of the best bait shops around this area. So we're at the bait shop right here. There's the full moon. So it'll be daylight in just a little while. We're at the bait shop. Already went upstairs to the bait shop and uh, paid for my shrimp. The guy's fixing to come down to uh, the bait part here and, and give us our shrimp. And sometimes there's some um, birds hanging out here waiting for something to eat. There was one here just a second ago. Bell Air Bait and Tackle. So we'll have our shrimp here in a couple minutes. There he is. There he's kind of up under the bush a little bit. He's waiting for something to eat. He's get a small fish or something that shrimp would jump. Okay, do you want your hat? Yeah. Okay. Alright, that looks like everything. What'd you do with the water we had? I think still in a seat. the bell or bait and tackle. Alright, so we're going to go over here to our favorite fishing spot. I'm going to be getting daylight here in just a little bit. Finish opening this one. Or open this one. Still open that one up. Set up here. Yeah, you want, yeah. There's a couple of rags. Take measure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with your popping cork? Yeah.
Got to shorten the next leader just a little. Okay, I don't know if this will pick up or not. It's still a little bit dark out. So I'll shorten Lynette's leader here for her popping cork. So I'm tying a multi knot. Now I'm going to sense it down. <clears throat> Salt Strong did a lot of testing on knots and they tested knots with um, wetting them like we were taught in the old days to wet your knot with some saliva before you uh, tighten it down completely to keep from friction breaking your knot and uh, he, he did a lot of testing on Salt Strong and he determined that you don't have to do that There you go, one out. Okay. There we go. Get the bait in out here. Get the bait in out. Got all my camera stuff I need right here in that bag too. In the tackle box bag. All my batteries and memory cards. So I'm gonna put my zoom lens on. No, not my zoom lens. This is my uh, wide angle lens. Okay, so this one's on, recording. Okay, and I think I'm going to start with the popping cork off soon. Five dozen shrimp here. Alright, now this popping cork, sometimes we use them just as a cork. But the idea of the popping cork is to um, pop it a couple times, like that. And it makes a popping sound in the water that uh, sounds like a fish feeding on a something or after a shrimp. 
and it'll attract the other fish to come feed on it. We've caught some really good fish right here. And then there's been a couple times we've fished here and didn't hardly catch anything at all. So we'll just have to see how the day goes. It's nice this morning that front went through. That front went through a couple days ago. It's pretty nice this morning out here. No humidity. And if you notice, um, every time I cast, I put my bell up, I cast, I put my hand on the bell and stop, stop my line where I need to, and then I um, flip the bell over by hand, and then if I need to I can reel my line a little and get the slack out of it. I just did a uh, video on Catch a Florida Memory from the Game of Fish Commission. So if you go on the myfwc.com and go on saltwater fishing and then go to Catch a Florida Memory. I caught a 33-inch um, redfish right here last year. And that um, entered me into the their program for Catch a Florida Memory for real big fish. And I just did a video on that. I just got the uh, a package in. It's a uh, recognition program. And uh, they sent me a shirt and a tumbler and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, sticker, a, a, a catalog or magazine with all the um, fish identifications and a bunch of stuff there and a certificate for catching a real big fish and a uh, letter of recognition for catching the redfish over 30 inches. And they have uh, several different fish on there and the size, if, the, if it's over a certain size, then you qualify for the real big fish. So it, that doesn't cost you anything. You just go online and uh, Put your picture in and apply for it. Put your information in. And you have to have pictures with all your fish that you enter. So that was uh, really cool to get that. So I got to go back into it this weekend too and uh, put my fish in, all my fish in the, uh, the life list, the catch life list on there. They do a recognition at 10 fish, 10 species, and then uh, a recognition at 30, and then at 50 fish, and then 70. They have 70 fish listed on there. So I got to go in and uh, 
get all my fish listed in there too that I've caught. So I'm right at 30 fish now with, with pictures. I've caught some fish in the past that I don't have pictures of them because it's been so long ago or we didn't take pictures back then or things like that. So I'm recatching a few now that I don't have pictures of from back then. A few different species. So I gotta go in and do that and then uh, get one that's species all listed in there too. She's got around 13 or 14 species now that she's caught. We also, a while back, we came here fishing and uh, actually came here in the evening. We stayed at a motel down the road. So we came over here and fished that morning and then uh, went over to Sand Key Park and fished. And then uh, went and checked into our motel and then came back here and fished for a little while in the evening. And when we got here and got out of the truck and got our stuff and uh, was coming over here to the spot. We passed uh, by um, a couple that were sitting there fishing and the lady recognized us from uh, YouTube, our YouTube videos. And she said that she had been watching our video. She'd been watching my videos and learning how to fish here and what, what to fish for and how to fish. And uh, said that she caught her a nice redfish right here too in this spot. So that, that was pretty cool to talk to her and, and to hear that, hear that she'd been watching my videos and that she'd caught fish because of it. So that was pretty cool. Got my line down there around the rock. I just see it now. There we go. Wind will create knots if you're not careful. there you'll see I'll stop my line and I can keep my line kind of tight so the wind don't take a lot of it and then I can close the bell and then I can wind reel in a little to keep from having a lot of slack out there
Get a little video here of the sun starting to come up by now. Get some video of the sky in the area here. Looks like the tide's almost completely out right now. So it'll start coming in here soon. Very soon. Should start coming in. We should have fish moving around. John said he's up there by the bait shop. He's up there fishing on that spot over there. Oh, so that probably was when I saw Yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, my longtime friend John, he's here fishing. He um, texted us this morning, said he was uh, on his way. So, Wynette thought she'd seen him pull in a while ago. But we wasn't real sure. So he's over close to the bait shop fishing on that end. Yeah, that's a good spot over there too when that caught her big redfish over there. Caught a couple of them over there, actually. This guy here, I think he's a wounded veteran. I think he sleeps under the bridge or at night. We see him come through. Almost every time we're here, we see him. So I'm pretty sure he's a wounded veteran. Every time we come here in the morning, we see him over there under the bridge and then he'll He'll um, get on his motorcycle and leave. I'll have to go over and talk to him sometime when we're here. Being a veteran myself, it's pretty nice to be able to talk with other veterans and especially the wounded veterans and, and then be involved in um, different events to help them, help some of the wounded veterans. We help out with some of the charity events. <laughs> hey, John. Doing good? Yeah. Yep. I didn't even throw a hook in, man. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty cool spot, dude. Yeah, it is, yeah. Is that no, both sides are good. This side and that side over there, they're both good spots. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Got any big fish yet? Not this morning, but we have we have caught big fish right here. Uh, what about big fish this morning? Um, I haven't seen any. There's usually some right here around the wall. Yeah. And us usually when we're fishing over there, there's usually people throwing bait nets over there too. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my friend John. I've known him for <clears throat> like 30 years. Me and him has worked together and fished and hunted together.
I had some pictures of uh, him and his dad fishing together too from years ago when we all went fishing together on a fishing trip that I um, I shared with him, made sure he had them. Because his dad passed away years ago. And I've also got a uh, picture of him holding up a big redfish. So I want to make sure that uh, he has that picture too. He can enter that in that catch of Florida memory for the real big fish. Because that one was well over 30 inches. And we got a hog hunt coming up next weekend. Me and him is going to be hog hunting together. And that's at a place I haven't hunted it in a long time, but we killed a lot of hogs in there years ago. And somebody just got pulled over for speeding. They patrol this area through here heavily. It's a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Several boats, people, several people with boats been pulling in. Sometimes it gets really busy. This is a real nice boat ramp. So this is a nice boat ramp here too at this area. You'll see people, a lot of people coming in with boats. This is a nice area too. A lot of people walk this area. They walk it across the bridge and back and around the uh, boat ramp and stuff here. Really nice area for that. <clears throat> for getting out and getting some exercise in the sun. I see a lot of people out here walking and jogging. Walking their dogs. Throw a couple pictures in right here too. <clears throat> We've caught some nice sheep's head right here, some mangrove snappers, and some black drone all right here in this around the rocks and the wall right here. So try to, I try to do a little teaching and stuff too as I do these videos. So I, don't, I don't know if you can actually see my line or not on this. I know some guys in their videos, they, they use a high visible line so you can actually see the line in the video. And I'm actually thinking about uh, changing Wynette's lines over to a high visible line so she can see them easier. But I can usually see my line. Like here, I'm watching my line so it don't get in the rocks down there. And I really like using the braid. With the braid, it casts further and you can feel the uh, tapping. 
any little tap in or anything you can feel it with the braid and it's pretty strong too you can get a smaller diameter and be stronger smaller diameter than the monofilament and it'll be uh, stronger so I really like the braid and then I use a uh, fluorocarbon leader which now I'm just um, starting to just switch over to not using the fluorocarbon but using just the regular monofilament for a leader because salt strong they did a lot of testing and, and all their tests were showing that the monofilament was better for leader material and less expensive There's another one got pulled over for speeding. We see that a lot right here. People speed through there a lot right through here and they get caught. It's just a 30 mile an hour speed limit right here. time sometimes getting out of here when you're leaving because of people speeding through there when the traffic gets heavier than people speeding what you eating over here baby huh? what are you eating nothing I'm fish oh you're getting fish bites out all right you getting hungry yet These birds here, they get uh, really brave sometimes. One of my videos I showed where when that was sitting there and the bird jumped up and took the shrimp out of her hand, or tried to, type, tried to take the shrimp out of her hand. A lot of these birds are definitely a lot to hang around us and try to see if they can find something to eat. Let's change this battery out.
And this GoPro here, this is uh, the Hero 3. This is actually Danny's, my son-in-law's. He's been letting me use it. And I bought the frame for it so it didn't have to be in the case. And then I bought the microphone, the external microphone. I bought those for it. And an extra memory card. He's He's got plenty of accessories for it. Okay, we're back recording. This is a very nice GoPro then. Takes really good film. Okay, I gotta change the batteries out in this one too, so I'm gonna turn it off. Get another view of the bait shop here. Where since it's uh, a little more daylight now, the bait shop, and they got a really nice boat ramp there. And we've seen this boat ramp, we've seen this uh, this parking lot fill up with trucks with boat trailers, and <clears throat> we've seen them just lying up through here waiting to get the boat put in the water. This is a really nice boat ramp area here. And the Bel Air bait shop, that's about the best bait shop around. I'll go out of my way a little bit if we're fishing somewhere near here and go to this bait shop. We're just getting a little more view here of the area from a different angle out here. And that's clear water over there. We go over there and fish a lot over there in clear water. Another one of our favorite spots. Once that tide starts coming back in, the fish will just start hitting. I want to try down here. I don't always hook these the same way, but I like hooking them right here under the horn, and then they can uh, gives them a natural movement where they can attract fish. But every once in a while, I hook them a little different, depending on what we're catching and what's hitting. Something hitting mine. I 
to see if he's big enough to take the foot. Could be bait fish hitting that thing. Small fish. I don't know, it should start coming in soon. It's been out for a long time. Yeah, those small bait fish that took my bait. But we have caught big fish further along that wall. Try pushing your rod out away from you. Grab it by the handle, look. Grab it by the handle back here and push it out away. Try to go back the opposite way you came. Let me see. Hold mine.
I think you got a fish on there that went under something. Really? Yeah, I can feel it sometimes. I can feel it a little bit, like, tapping. Okay. Uh huh. That was not my fault. No. I'm gonna get the batteries changed in this one too. This one isn't a GoPro, this one's actually a cross tour. It's a cheaper camera, but it works really good. So I really like using that thing. And it takes some. Um, this cross tour takes 4K video, which is really nice. Packing up to go. We've been here for quite a while since before daylight. And we caught a few fish, at least all of us caught fish. And my buddy John, he was here catching fish, so I got a couple of pictures of him here in the video where he was catching fish. Alright, so we'll see y'all later. Yeah. All right, we're on our way home from fishing. It's uh, almost 1.30 in the afternoon, and it's only 83 degrees today. 83 degrees and no humidity. It's been really nice going out there fishing and uh, not sweating like crazy while we're out there fishing. 83 degrees here in Florida.